Hey guys, Chris Fix here, and today I'm gonna show you everything that you need to know on how to pick out a proper racing seat for your car. We'll be taking a trip to the local shop that sells racing seats, and I'm removing the passenger seat so we could test fit different racing seats to make sure the one I want fits. Man, that is a mess, but check it out, 20 bucks, not bad. Looks like today is gonna be a good day. Now I'm looking for racing seats because these seats have no side support and they've seen better days. Check this out, watch how much I move in my stock seat. Since I started drifting, I noticed how much I was getting flung back and forth because there's no side support in the stock seat. And I was fighting to stay planted so much that it was making it difficult for me to focus on learning how to drift. So switching out these seats with racing seats is a priority to help me excel in drifting. All right, we're on the road to Stable Energies, a motorsport shop that has a huge selection of racing seats. I called them up and they said I could take video at their store and even offered to help make sure that I cover the most important questions people have when buying racing seats. Just so you know, you can't buy any racing seat. There are some very important aspects when picking out the correct seat, which I'm gonna cover, so after watching this video, you'll be able to get your own racing seats. And before you know it, we have arrived. This is pretty exciting. I can't wait to check out all these racing seats. Hey, how's it going, guys? I'm Chris. I spoke with you on the phone. Carlos. Hey, I'm Joe. Nice to meet you. So I'm looking for bucket seats for my Mustang, which I drift. Yes, we have plenty of uh, selection over there for you to check out and see what you think. Perfect. Thank you very much. Let us know if you got any questions. All right. It is awesome to see all these seats here and to be able to sit in them, see them all next to each other. And we're going to go on to the other side. I want to show you these halo seats to start. All these seats in this back row are called halo seats. They have this protection up top here where your head goes. And if we sit in the seat, the halo is right at head level and provides side to side protection. But if you look sideways, you have a serious blind spot. This is what it looks like when you look left and when you look right. And that halo blocks a good amount of your side view. So a seat with a halo is a great choice for a dedicated track car, but since I'll be driving mine on the street to get to the track, it's not good for me. So instead, we're gonna come around this side and we're gonna be looking at regular bucket seats. Next, we wanna pick out what our seats are gonna be made out of. So we have two different materials. We have aluminum and composite-based seats. Aluminum's good because it's usually more inexpensive compared to the composite seats. And I'll include pricing in the description for you to check out. These seats could also be pretty light at around 12 pounds. And they fit 4 point, 5 point, and 6 point harnesses. The downside is you're going to need a back brace to connect the seat directly to the cage because in an accident, these aluminum seats can bend. They're also not FIA certified. Now composite seats are typically made of fiberglass, but you could get more expensive seats made of carbon fiber or Kevlar. And composite seats in general are usually more expensive than aluminum seats. They're also a little heavier, but still way lighter than the factory seat. The good thing is you only need to mount these seats to the floor. You don't need a back brace. And they fit four point, five point, and six point harnesses. And a lot of composite seats are FIA certified. And that brings me to my next point. What is an FIA certification? The FIA is an organization that regulates safety aspects of motorsports. They test the seats so you know when you buy one, it's safe. And it's important to note not every seat gets tested and is FIA certified. And it doesn't mean that they're bad seats, it just means that you don't know if they meet a certain safety standard. So if there is a holographic FIA sticker, it's been approved and meets their safety standard. And since seats are an important part to safety, I personally want an FIA rated seat and you want to make sure to check the requirements for your particular motorsport because sometimes FIA rated seats are required. And finally, if you are getting an FIA rated seat, you want to check the date. Most racing seats are good for five years and in this case, it's not valid after 2021. It's 2017 now. So this seat has four years left, which makes sense because it's a display seat. So when you buy your racing seats, you want to make sure they're good for five years. And if not, you should get a discount. And now for the fun part. One of the main reasons I came to this store is because I could actually physically sit in these seats and see how they feel. Now, it's not just a comfort thing, it's also a safety thing, so let me show you why. First, you want to sit in all the different seats to get a feel for what's comfortable. You want the seat to be tight, but not too tight where it's uncomfortable. For example, this Recaro on the left is just not comfortable to sit in for me. And the Recaro on the right is comfortable, but it's way too wide and there's too much side-to-side -side wiggle room. And finally, this OMP seat in the middle fits me pretty snug and is actually really comfortable. So I'm liking this a lot. So once you find a seat that fits you, now you need to find a seat that has the proper height for the harness pass-through. That's very important for safety. When you sit in a seat, you want to make sure that the harness pass-through is at the height of your shoulder, like this. You want the harness to sit on your shoulder and not against the seat. Also remember, if you're using a head and neck restraint, it's going to add a little bit of height to your shoulder, so take that into account. 
So with and without the head and neck restraint, this harness sits nicely on my shoulder and the seat fits me perfect. One thing to keep in mind is that large pass-throughs like this are nice because it gives you more room to work with. Now an example of a seat that I'm too tall for is this Recaro. My shoulders are above the harness pass-throughs and the harness sits on my shoulder at an angle greater than 20 degrees, which is not good because in an accident, there's going to be way too much downward force that could compress your spine and that's not what you want. With the other Recaro, I'm too short and my shoulder sits below the harness pass-through. The harness is pressed down against the pass-through and isn't tight against the top of my shoulder, so I'm not properly secured in the case of a rollover. So out of all the seats here, the one that fits me the best is this one right here, the WRCR. But what if you can't get to a shop and actually sit in a seat? Well, all these seat companies have different measurements that you can look up online, and you can measure your own body from your butt to your shoulders and get your height. You can see I measured myself and I'm 610 millimeters and the harness hole for the seat is at 600 millimeters, which is why I fit perfect. Same thing with your width. My hip width is 390 millimeters and this seat, the width is 390 millimeters. So just in case you can't come in and sit in a seat yourself, you can measure yourself and get a good idea of what seat will fit you. And I really like this seat because it fits me well. So do you think we'll be able to test fit this in my car? Yeah, you got your car here today. It's always a good idea to make sure it fits the car before you buy it. So yeah, let's let's do that. As you guys know, I already took out the passenger seat at home so I can make sure the seats I want to get will fit. And that's definitely a benefit of going to a shop because they could help you just like this. Moment of truth, does it fit? All right, it fits, but man, it is close. You would think with a Mustang, you'd have plenty of room back here. Yeah, with the uh, you know with the wide door cards on this car, it takes up a lot of room, but you're not touching, and you got plenty of room on the inside there. It looks like it's going to fit just fine. Awesome. But what happens if you can't go to a store like this and fit the seats? Well, I'm going to show you a few key measurements that you could take at home with your stock seats to ensure that you can find a seat that fits. So the first and probably most important measurement is at the top of the seat near the shoulders because the side bolsters on racing seats are significantly wider than the side bolsters on a stock seat. So get your tape measure and measure from the edge of the center console to the door card, which on this car is about 630 millimeters. And the next important measurement is gonna be the width of the base of the seat. So you're gonna measure from the edge of the center console all the way to the door card, and that is 540 millimeters. So those are the two main measurements that you wanna take. And then you could just compare it to all the different measurements that the manufacturer gives you. And that's how you measure your seats to make sure any racing seats you pick out will fit. So let's get the test seat out and head back into the store. So we started off narrowing down our choices by looking at composite bucket seats. Then we found a seat that I safely fit in and a seat that fit in my car. So I'm pretty sure this is the seat I want to get. What do you think? Uh, I think it fits the car fine. You fit in it pretty well for sure. Uh, I think it's a good choice. And uh, now you're going to need some mounting hardware. Let's come take a look at that. So one thing that's important to know is when you buy a seat, you're getting just a seat. It doesn't come with anything else. So we need mounting hardware to install the seat in the car. We're going to need a floor mount, a pair of side mounts, and a hardware kit with nuts, bolts, and washers. So first, let's cover the floor bracket. These brackets are specific to your make and model, so I'm going to have to get a Mustang floor bracket. Then we have side mounts, which bolt to the floor mount. You can see the side mount and floor mount bracket have different holes in them, so you can mount up the seat where you feel comfortable in the car. This seat here already has side mounts on it, so you can see how it's set up. They're bolted right into the side of the seat. And then this flat piece sits on top of the floor bracket, just like that. So this is your basic setup. You have the floor mount connected to the side mount, the side mount connected to the seat, and everything's all held together with some fasteners. It's that simple. One of the only choices you'll have to make are the side mount materials. This is aluminum and this is steel. I wish you guys could feel the difference in weight. The aluminum is about half the weight, but they're the same strength. They'll do the same job. So if you're worried about the weight of your car, definitely go with the aluminum. It's only a few bucks extra and that's what I'm going to do. And the last option you could get are the sliders, which allows you to move the seat backwards and forwards. The sliders get bolted to the top of the floor mount, and then the seat with the side mounts attached gets bolted on top of the sliders, like that. Now, I won't be running sliders because they add a little bit over an inch to the overall height of the seat. And I'll have a helmet on, which puts my head pretty close to the roof already. I'm also going to be running a harness, and your harness has to be at a certain angle. So if your seat slides forwards and backwards, the angle is going to change and might move out of spec. But sliders are always an option, especially if you're running stock seatbelts. All right, so after testing out all these different seats, here is what I picked. I'm getting these OMP WRC R seats. For each seat that you get, you need one floor mount and a pair of side mounts. Yep, that should just about do it, Chris. Uh, it should be everything you need. Let's, uh, let's go get these in your car. Oh man, this is exciting. Finally, I got some racing seats. I cannot wait to get these installed in the car. And if you're curious, 
there's plenty of room in a two-door car to transport a pair of new racing seats. All right, and that is everything that you need to know on how to buy racing seats. I wanna thank these guys at Stable Energies. Thank you very much, Joe and Carlos. I really appreciate it. You guys helped me so much with all the information, helping me test fit everything, putting the seat in the car, so I really appreciate it. Yeah, I can't wait to see uh, what you think of them when they're in the car. I'll be sure to link their website in the description so you guys could check out all the seats they have and all the other racing equipment they have. So definitely check them out, and hopefully the video was helpful. If it was, remember to give it a thumbs up, and also, if you're not subscribed, consider subscribing because we're going to be installing the racing seats soon. Stay tuned.